there, everyone. Welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. It's been a couple days since I've played this, but, um, as you can see, Sayori is gone. Just replaced by garbled glitches. I noticed that Monica's more dominant than these two, but, um, I have a couple things to share with you. If you go to, um, the Doki Doki Literature Club folder in your Steam folder somewhere, for me, it's like Steam, Steam Apps Common, then Doki Doki Literature Club. It's probably the same for everyone else. I don't know. There's several things here. First off, there's this traceback file that I didn't notice right off the bat. And you might not notice either because my webcam was covering the thing. But if you go to the traceback file, you find this. Which I'll have a screen cap coming up here. I'm sorry, but an uncaught exception occurred. Oh, jeez. I didn't break anything, did I? Hold on a sec. I can probably fix this. I think. Actually, you know what? This would be probably be a lot easier if I just deleted her. She's the one who's making this so difficult. <laughs> well, here goes nothing. I wonder if her is Sayori. Second off, there's this image file called Happy Thoughts. It's not happy at all. It's Sayori, I assume, because there's the bow. And you can see the noose right up, right up at the top. How funny that the A and the O were turned into X's. Lastly, there's this text file called CAN YOU HEAR ME in all caps. There's a little devil inside all of us. Beneath their manufactured perception, their artificial reality, is a writhing, twisted mess of dread, loathing, judgment, elitism, self-doubt. All thrashing to escape the feeble hold of their host, seeping through every little crevice they can find. Into their willpower, starving them of all motivation and desire. Into their stomach, forcing them to drown their guilt in comfort food. Or into a newly opened gash in their skin, hidden only by the sleeves of a cute new shirt. Such a deplorable, tangled mess is already present in every single one of them. That's why I choose not to blame myself for their actions. All I did was untie the knot. So... That's... those are things. And I can't help but wonder... Well, actually, I, I, I'm feeling pretty confident that Monica is somehow responsible, so... Let's actually continue where I left off, which would be this one. So, last we left off, I was supposed to be making a poem. After a really weird cut where there was glitch everywhere. Just glitch. Just weird little glitches. So let's try making a poem. So I'm a dream. Let's try to make little, um, little Yuri happy. Natsuki, I'm kind of worried about admittedly, so desire. Clouds. Yeah, why not clouds? Heaven sent and hell bent. If I'm hell bent for anything, it's hopefully stopping Monica, because, I don't know, I'm just latching onto this really very real possibility that Monica's behind it. Ever since that whole thing where Siri said Monica told her to do something. So let's flower. Let's let's help Natsuki a bit. He's staying far, far away from that word. Feather. Kawain. Sensation. That sounds about right. Vivid. Electricity, because it's in my soul. Do 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 do. Tenacious. Prayer. Yeah, I feel like you'd be all right for that. Destiny. Fantasy. Games. Vacation. Rain cloud. Contamination. The universe. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. I haven't! Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Em. Uh, hi, Yuri. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs in the air a little. Uh, um... Yuri glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Natsuki is reading manga at a desk. And surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. What? About yesterday. I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. I still don't know what happened between you and Natsuki. Like, what did you say to her? C can you tell me that? And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri, I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. 
You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Uh, um, don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. What's so wrong with being a bit too happy? I mean, I can understand being really overly happy, but... A bit of happiness goes a long way, you know? I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little bit brighter with you around, and... Uh, sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Uh, no, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man... Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either. Mm. Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. Mm. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Uh, um, Natsuki, about yesterday. I, I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So, Yuri, what the heck are you talking about? Oh. With the way Natsuki was acting, I was thinking, oh, well, she doesn't remember at all, does she? Because I feel like if Natsuki did remember, she would have thrown a shit fit. But if she legitimately doesn't remember, did you do something yesterday? Huh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. What? I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? Uh, but, but... I'll accept your apology anyway, if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear, since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't hate you. <laughs> well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial, though. Hey. Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry! I'm super sorry! Ah, uh, there you are, Monica. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Yeah, I am worried. I'm, I'm super worried, actually. Well, Natsuki was. I, I was not! <laughs> what took you so long, anyway? Uh... Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ha, <laughs> don't give me more credit than I deserve. Yeah, please, don't give her too much credit. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good yet. Still... That must require a lot of dedication. So I'm still impressed. Ha, huh, well thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. <laughs> that's... Monica looks at me. Don't look at me! Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Em. Monica smiles sweetly. You get out of my face. Uh... I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. <laughs> don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I choose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki has already run off into the closet. Um, um, since your compliments put me in a good mood... I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Yeah, definitely. I planned on it anyway. Okay. Can we start now? Let's find a place to sit. Uh, I'm being a little forceful, aren't I? I'm sorry. My heart just won't stop pounding for some reason. Don't worry about it. If anything, it's nice to see you have so much energy. Yeah, but I need to try to calm down. I won't be able to focus on reading like this. Take your time. Yuri takes a deep breath, then pulls a copy of the book out of her bag. 
Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Alright, so we're going through this again. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf. The kind with a filter inside. Has anything new popped up? No. I'm gonna keep looking back and forth in the... in the main Doki Doki folder. Just in case something pops up. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk, and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you. That's okay. You stay here. It won't take me long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Uh, did Yuri leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Get out of my face. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Is something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Oh, no. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. Oh, right, I went with her to go get water. I start heading down the hallway. <sighs> What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. <laughs> A sharp inhale, like someone is sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Oh! Oh, fuck! Oh my god, I, I knew that was gonna happen because of the thing with her, her pulling up her sleeve real quick and that knife, but Jesus Christ! Kya! Oh, whoa, whoa, what, what, what? What? I'm going backwards, what? I'm back. Thanks for waiting patiently. Em, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Oh dear god, time's being manipulated now. I'm getting the feeling that simulator is being taken a bit too literally here. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do anything less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything? <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Uh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. <laughs> I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. When it's you who's around, anyway. Ah, uh, that's great, Yuri. Ah, uh, jeez. I, I can't help but feel like everything's about to get worse. Just don't push yourself too much. Please. You're always worrying about me, Em. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Em, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Eh? Why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Ah, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh, m my... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes! I have terrible posture, so that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. Please stay safe while, you're, while I get this book. I retrieve the book from my bag. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Yuri and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. <gasps> Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. 
Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. Yeah, I would say the same for everyone here that hasn't noticed anything that's happened in the past several hours. Well, not today, I mean several hours in terms of gameplay. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all of my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, uh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. I don't like where this is going. Uh, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Eh? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, uh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any harder of a time reading from it, but as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, and I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips, as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Uh, Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... um... S sorry I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh-oh. The music stopped. I don't like this. Uh, uh... Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't... um... Suddenly... Uh, what? Suddenly, Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. Um, my heart... My heart won't stop pounding, Em. What's happening? I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, Em? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? Oh, God. Are you having, like, a heart attack or something? I feel like I'm losing my mind. Yuri, stay calm. I can't make it stop. It even makes me not want to read. I just want... to look... at you. Um... What? <sighs> Are those human eyes I'm seeing? What? Yuri, uh, back away, please. <sighs> Yuri, please... Snap out of it! Look away! Come on! <sighs> Come on, don't, don't... Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, it's time to share poems! Um, Yuri! Are you, are you doing okay? I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri stares at the poem with a surprised expression on her face. Do you like it? Um... This one might even be better than yesterday's. How did you even pick up on this so quickly? Just yesterday I was telling you the kind of techniques worth practicing. Maybe that's why. You did such a good job explaining. I really wanted to try giving it more Im 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 more imagery, sheesh. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. Uh, uh, that makes me so happy. It's so amazing to feel like I'm valued, Em. Everything that you write is a treasure to me. My heart pounds just holding it. Not again. <laughs> I want to write a poem about this feeling. Is that bad, Em? I'm not being weird, right? I'm having a harder time than usual at concealing my emotions. I'm kind of embarrassed. But right now, I just want you to read my poem, too. Okay? Wheel. Oh, this is weird. A rotating wheel. Turning an axle. Grinding. Bolt head. Linear gearbox. Falling sky. Seven holy stakes. A docked ship, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a torn harness, parabolic gearbox, expanding universe, time controlled by slipping cogwheels, existence of God, swimming with open water in all directions, drowning. I see a stain. I see a stain right here. Is... Oh, I, there's a... Is that... What is, is that dried blood? Please tell me that's not dried blood. A prayer written in blood. A prayer written in time devouring snakes with human eyes. A thread connecting all things human eyes. A kaleidoscope of holy stakes. Exponential gearbox. A sky of exploding stars. God disproving the existence of God. A wheel rotating in six dimensions. Forty gears in a ticking clock. 
A clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet. A clock that ticks forty times every time it ticks every second time. A bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a docked ship to another world. A kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks. A time devouring prayer connecting a sky of forty gears and open human eyes in all directions. Breathing gearbox. Breathing bolt head. Breathing ship. Breathing portal. Breathing snakes. Breathing god. Breathing blood. Breathing holy stakes. Breathing human eyes. Breathing time. Breathing prayer. Breathing sky. Breathing wheel. What in the world? <laughs> it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. Ah, uh, that is, a pen fell out of your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for safekeeping, and I, um, I just really like the way that it writes. I don't like where this is going. So I wrote this poem with it, and now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem, though. Um, Natsuki, uh, are you feeling all right? Hmm. <laughs> well, it's not really worse than your last one. But I can't really say it's any better, either. <sighs> huh? Feel what? Uh, well, anything that isn't a train wreck, I'll take as a win. And I get the feeling you're probably the most critical. Hey, what makes you... Wait, maybe that was a compliment? <laughs> Glad to see someone recognizes my experience. Well then, keep practicing and maybe you'll be as good as me someday. That's, uh, something tells me Natsuki completely missed the point. Just make sure you find a little bit of influence from everyone. I think you're at least being influenced by Yuri a bit, aren't you? I mean, I know you've been, like, spending some time with her or whatever. But you know, Monica and I are just as good as her. A at poems, I mean. So you should really try to learn something or you'll never get better. Here's one I wrote. I'll make sure you learn something from it. Oh, it's not a crazy poem. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wrinkly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably likes spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Well, I just strongly disagree with you there, I'll say that. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. And not so full of crazy like someone else's poem. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. Hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes, as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Such as two of the girls in this very club whom I respectfully won't name. Kind of ironic that even in my one place of comfort, I can't even have people respect me. Jeez, now you're making me complain too much. What did I do? Oh, that, what did I do? For what it's worth, I respect you. Well, I guess thanks. But it's kind of obvious that you respect Yurdy more, so whatever. We're done sharing, so you can leave now. Well, let's up this Monica. Let's see, I could probably wrap this up within the time I got left. Hi. Em, I think you saw something earlier that you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when she's around you. Which shouldn't be a problem in itself, but when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Oh. Isn't that kind of messed up? A fucking bitch. She even brings a different one to school every day, like she has a collection or something. 
I mean, it's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. Yeah, sure, totally, I believe you. I think she just gets some kind of high from it. It might even be like a sexual thing. But the point is, you've kind of been enabling her. What? I'm not saying it's your fault though, but I guess that's why I had to explain it all to you. So I think if you keep your distance, that would probably be best for her. While you're at it, don't be shy to spend a little more time with me. No! To put it lightly, I at least have it together in my head, and I know how to treat my club members. Bullshit. How'd you treat Sayori, huh? But anyway, you wanna read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. The colors, they won't bright, beautiful col- Bright, beautiful colors, or beautiful col colors. Flashing, exploding, piercing, red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating, uh, waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing, sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a knife on a breathing rib cage. Endless, uh, an endless something of meaningless. Delete her? Okay, no, 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 no. You're not deleting anybody. At least I hope not. Okay? Don't you dare go all Matt Hardy on me. Wait, that'd be an insult, because at least Matt Hardy is enjoyable. You're ne Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm gonna check my thing again. Oh god, there's a new one. It's just e I hate this. I can't do anything. Nothing. No matter how many times you play, it's all the same. It would be really, really easy to kill myself right now. But that would mean I don't get to talk to you anymore. All I want is for you to hate them. Why is that so hard? Yeah, please. Give me more proof that Monica's responsible. I mean, it's pretty uh, I, I think it gets pretty obvious at the, at the close to the beginning, but now... Please, keep piling this on me. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to, um... Well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You'll never know when, um... Who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Please help me. Um... I'm clicking literally everywhere else but on the okay, because... Oh god, you're giving me a choice. Fine! That's my advice for today! Thanks for listening! Alright. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Uh... Oh, I see. It's a code. Nothing is real. Oh, hello. Am I getting something new here? So, yeah, there's just blot out things. Nothing is real. I kind of figured that. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today. So, if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh. Do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Em joined and we've started with some club activities, but this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members, and the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club! More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage! Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The literature club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival. Even if it's something small. Right, Em? Uh... Oh, come on! You can't take advantage of Em to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. <sighs> Look, Monica. Do you really think any of us here joined the club with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked until M joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And M isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, 
But you're really the only one who's so interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Uh-oh. Monica is clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and M want to get more members too, right? Hmm. I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue this situation, um, no. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club, it's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean that we're against getting new members or anything. Em, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Hmm. Now you've done it, Natsuki. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all! I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't... There aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me! She's not taking anything away. No, Em! It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one... I mean... At least for a little bit of time. Things were nice! Natsuki starts packing up her things. Oh, don't go. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki. Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. Oh dear. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Ah! Whoa, what? Who cares about that obnoxious brat? I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. Uh, I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you, Em? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along, and for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the literature club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. Uh... There's blood coming out of her eye! With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change, too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. Alright. Well, maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri? Huh? Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday, but I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also, a wonderful friend. M monica I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever. Okay? Me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. Shall we go, Em? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but... I'm going to chat a little bit with Em before we leave. Just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Ugh. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow! Monica waves as Yuri exits the classroom. Okay, I'm nearly at 40 minutes, so I gotta end the episode here. Thank you so much for watching. Next time, we're gonna have a little chat with Monica, and I can only imagine that this is gonna go right down here. A straight-up nosedive like a crater or something anyhow i hope you have a good morning day or night wherever you are and i will catch you later